So let's go ahead and get started this morning. As you know, we've been talking about villains in the Bible, right? That's, that's what we've been do, going over the last few weeks. And um, so that's what we're going to continue to do today. But to be honest with you, we're going to talk about the villain, the head villain, if you know what I mean. We're going to talk about the one that we call Satan, the devil, and a lot of other things. As soon as I find my notes here, we're going to get going. I've got them all turned around, I think. There we go. Okay. You know I'm a former coach, don't you? But anyway, here we go. I don't know why I even bring a notebook up here with me. It doesn't help me at all. Uh, but when you talk about Satan, we call, you know, we, we've called him Lucifer. We've, we, we call him the devil. We call him the enemy. We call him the Antichrist. He's got a lot of names. But let me tell you, he's got a lot more descriptions than he does names. And so today I wanted to, to, to talk about it, and, and I wanted just to, to, to just kind of, it's really not so much about him as, as, as it is about what he does. And so I really think today, it's, it's an amazing thing to me that in the last few, in the last week and a half, probably two weeks, I bet I've had, I don't know how many people start talking to me about this in a roundabout way, you know, just hitting bits and pieces of what I'm going to share with you today. And it was like just a confirmation to me that this was exactly what we, we needed to talk about today. Uh, well, let's just, can we just talk a little bit about the beginning, just a little bit, right? Here Adam and Eve is there in the garden, right? God's created the greatest uh, environment you could ever ask for, right? I mean, they had every need met. They had no issues of, of, of any kind. The Bible says that not only did he create Adam and Eve in his image, but he also gave them dominion over all of the creation. All the animals, all the different animals that had been created, he gave them, he gave them dominion over the garden, to tend the garden. And, and in that garden, he planted trees, and the Bible says that those trees were good to the sight and for food. But then he talks about two other trees, and I'm kind of giving us an introduction here. He plants two other trees in the garden. One is called the what? The tree of life, and the other is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Correct? And the only thing God said to Adam and Eve was, and when he, he said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so here is where our topic today comes in, Satan. This is where he comes in in the form of a serpent. And uh, he goes to Eve, and he begins to tempt her. To do what? He says, you can eat of this tree, right? Now, we might think that Eve was in rebellion, but that's really not what it was. Really what it was is the devil was telling her, you can be like God. You can be, you can be God, to be more pointed. And so as we look at this this morning, there's, a, there's really a lot here. Can I just tell you something? We were talking in the men's group the other day, and we were talking about gifts, and we talked about the fact that there's basically two, two, two gifts that covers a multitude of things in the body of Christ. One is teaching, and the other is service. Well, can I tell you, I feel a whole lot more comfortable serving than I do speaking. And so... If I have to stop and get a drink of water, it's because I'm nervous and my mouth's getting dry. And I don't know how many times I've done this, and this is not necessarily what I think is my gift, but when I'm asked to do it, and God gives me an opportunity to do it, I'm just going to share what God says to me. That's all I know how to do, so I'm going to share it with you, because I think 
Today, this is a vital message for the church, the church as a whole. As we look at this right here, we, we realize that we, we think of the, that the, the fruit that, that, that Adam and Eve ate of is like an apple. You know, we've seen all these examples or pictures of Adam and Eve eating the apple. Had nothing to do with the apple. The tree, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil represented human, human autonomy. In other words, it was to say, I can know all things, I can do all things just like God. Just as if I were God. In other words, they had it made. They had it made, and then here comes the devil in the, in the form of a serpent. That's, that's one thing I never could understand. I mean, I know Jason likes snakes, but I, he might be the only one I know <laughs> that would talk to a snake. I mean, have you ever thought about that? I mean, it just blows my mind. And I'm not sure he talks to them or what he does with them, but he can have them. And I can imagine that Eve is sitting there talking to a serpent. He comes in, the, the Bible says he comes in the form of a serpent. And, and, and what God had told them was this. Basically, I'm just going to use words, what he said. They knew this because, listen, they had a divine nature. They were, they were with God. They were in the presence of God. They had no, they had no idea about sin. N none of that stuff. But here's the deal. They had it made. The problem was they also had a choice. God gave them a choice. He said, you can eat of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You're not to take, because if you do, you will surely die. And what he was talking about, he wasn't talking about this, the physical death. He was talking about the spiritual death. What he was saying was, look, and I'm just going to paraphrase it how I think it might have been said. It was probably said something like this. If you... If you eat of that tree, then our, our relationship is, is, is going to, there's going to be a, a wall put up in our relationship because you're not going to understand me like you understand me now. And we're not going to be able to fellowship in the same way that we can, can fellowship now. So the fruit of the tree is exactly what the Bible says it is. The fruit of the tree was knowledge, it was information, it was ideas, it was a different view than what God had. It was thought patterns. Have we heard about that any time lately? We were just talking about it right back there, weren't we, Matt? It's a thought pattern. It's a thought pattern. I'm, I'm going to share some stuff with you today that, that really feeds me, and I know it. And I know it, and yet every day I get up, every day my feet hit the floor, I have to make a choice. And it's great that God gave us a choice, because otherwise we wouldn't be anything but robots, right? And that, that's all we'd be. He wanted us to choose him. He wanted to be in a divine relationship with you and me. He was basically just saying to Adam and Eve, if you change your way of thinking, Adam, Eve, if you eat of that tree and you change your way of thinking, it's going to create separation between you and me. And so that's kind of where it starts, right? But Satan said this. He said, oh, you can eat of the tree. It won't hurt you. You'll be just like God. And we thank God, they should have known better than that. But just hold on. We ought to know better than that too. So I want to talk to you a little bit about it. First of all, you need to understand God's not opposed to knowledge. God desires that we have knowledge. Matter of fact, he says, my people perish or they are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The issue isn't knowledge. The issue is rather, you know, the motive behind how we acquire that knowledge. Why do we want knowledge? Why do we get in the Bible? Why do I want to be able to quote Scripture? Why do I want to be able to say something? So I, have to have, I have to understand why God tells me these things are important and why I do them. And that's, that's the difference. God is not opposed to knowledge. Look, you can have, I don't have a theology degree. I have three or four degrees, 
but they're nowhere in, they're not in theology. So I don't know everything. And can I just tell you all those that's got these theology degrees don't know everything either. Everything they know, you and I have access to. We don't have to have a degree at the end of our name to have access to everything that God says. It's right here in his book. So we're, we're talking about this. The enemy lied to Adam and Eve and said, it won't hurt you. And that same devil, that same Satan, is doing the same thing today that he did back in the time of the garden. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1 says, We know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs us up. There's another translation. Now regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols, yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel important, it is the love that strengthens the church. It's the love that strengthens the church. If, if you don't get anything else I say today, I want you to get that. It's the love that strengthens the church. Who is the church? The body of Christ. Who is the body of Christ? You and me. You and me. So I want you to really listen close. So just to sum this up real quick so we can go on to what I want to talk about, Satan didn't tempt Eve with blatant rebellion. He tempted her with a desire to be like God. And I put this down because I, I, I wanted to see it. He tempted the soulish realm, which is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And that's what really I'm going to get into today. I'm going to talk about all three parts of, of who we are, at, the Bible tells us we are. So we, we see that Satan is... is comes in the form of a serpent, so we see how Satan, we know, was cast from heaven, right? Because he rebelled against God and re because he wanted to be God. So he was cast down. We know that. So as we talk about it, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes. Our whole what? Body? What? Soul and what? Mind. Right? He talks about it all right here. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. God created us with the, this distinct, these three distinct parts. One is what? Spirit? Right? One is what? Soul and this old body. Right? We don't get to trade it in. You can keto it. You can veto it. You, you can owe it all you want to. But this body, believe me, the body says go. I mean, the mind says go and the body says no. The older you get, and you can laugh if you want to, but you're going to see that day. Did you notice how easy I bent down and got that bottle of water? You don't move quick when you get our age. You don't have that natural twitch anymore. But it's amazing. God created us with these distinct, distinct parts. Spirit, soul, and body. And we're going to talk about each one of those real quickly because I've only got a certain amount of time. Okay, let's, let's begin with the spirit. A spirit that needs redeemed is what we had. Before Satan came on the scene and tempted Adam and Eve, they had a divine nature, right? They were spiritually one with God. But when they ate of the fruit, when they decided that they were going to be like God, spiritually, they died. So we were born into this world spiritually dead. You got me? Because you got a body. I hope you're a real body. Right? You have a mind, you have a will, you have emotions. I know you have all those things. You are a spirit person. But when they sinned, our spirit was no more one with God. That's what Jesus came 
to do. Jesus came, and he came as man, God-man. He was still all God, right? But he understood everything we deal with. He understood every temptation, every situation we deal with. He walked the earth. For three years, he walked this earth, and he understood everything that every feeling, every emotion, every, every, every you know, the Bible says, you know, all the different things that would tempt a person, but it says he never, what, sinned. Why? Because he came to pay the price on Calvary so that when he, he did, he, what did he die? Did he die? Yes, his body died. He died to self. He died to self. Right? So that you and I could be risen up to again be alive in the Spirit. Are you with me? I mean, I know this is Christianity 101, but sometimes we just think we say a prayer and we appreciate Jesus saving our soul and we don't understand that not only did he get us out of hell into heaven, he gave us a new spirit. He brought our spirit back alive, and he made that spirit one with God. You are, if, you, if you're born again, you are one spirit with God. But the thing I want you to understand today is even though you are, you are born again, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, you still have a soul, and you still have a body. Your spirit man, if 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 you've received Christ, your spirit, man, is just as if you had never sinned. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? If you really understood that to the depth, you'd be making a little bit more noise right now. You're awfully quiet. I mean, really, think about it. If somebody came up here and just conked over dead, y'all would be, whoo. Call, call Floyd, call Floyd, the MS, call, call him, call him. But all of a sudden, if they were raised to life, it'd be amazing. Y'all be shouting and hollering. Let me tell you, you were dead, and he brought you back to life. You need to be excited about that. Sometimes I think we just get too complacent. We need to be a little bit, have a little fire in us. It comes from understanding who we are and what we're called to do and what Jesus, first and foremost, did for you and I. Uh, I want to read this. Now, I know, boy, it's still quick. <laughs> Quicker than you thought. Hey, it kind of hurt my shoulder, but it, <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> oh, you got to laugh. It's good to laugh, you know. The Bible says laughter is good for the soul, right? And it is, it is. But in Ephesians, and I just wanted to read this because it, it just says so much. And it's going to be up on the screen, I'm sure. But in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 11, I just want to read. I want you to listen to what it says. It says, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not, influence, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Did y'all hear that? He has, because of what? Jesus Christ, first of all, because the Father God loved us so much, he knew that Adam and Eve had blew it. He gave us Christ, his only begotten son. And he came and he died so that our spirit man could once again be alive. Your spirit man is the most important part of who you are because that is the part of you that can fellowship with God. When you got born again, you now have a legal, heavenly, divinely right to fellowship with God, to be a friend of God. Now, I, I, if you're here today and you're not born again, God loves you just as much as he does anybody else in this building. But I want to tell you something. 
He loves you so much that he sent his son. And if you haven't received him, I'm going to tell you something. You're not living. You're not living. And I say that in all humility and love. But we need to understand what justification is. When Jesus, when we accepted Christ, it says just as if we had never sinned. Never sinned. However, as many of us know, the soul and body requires time, doesn't it? Would you agree with me on that? You know what's so great? To show you that we're just human. When I got these glasses on, I see this great. When I got them on, y'all are a blur. I can't see anything. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, to not be conformed to the world, but to what? What does he tell us to be conformed to? Image of God, right? No more like the world, but like Christ. That's what he tells us. So he's already telling us, look, I heard it talked about this morning. I heard it in the Bible. We have a, we have a devotion when the praise team began this morning. And we were talking about a situation that, that comes up. And I want to tell you, the only way I know to answer a situation is right here. It's right here. I could give you a human definition for it. I could give you a human answer for it. I could give you all the logic I've learned over the years and all my years of living. But I want to tell you, that ain't going to do you any good. This will tell you what to do. This will tell you what to do. So spirit, we've been born again. If we've accepted Christ. I want to, I want to, I, I really understand what Paul was saying when he was talking to the Galatians when he says, man, it's like giving childbirth again. Now, I don't know how Paul, what Paul knew about childbirth, but you ladies know what I'm talking about childbirth. Many of you have children, right? And Paul was saying, man, if I got to go through, like going through childbirth again, I've been teaching y'all, I've been showing you, I've been telling you, I've been giving you the word of God. And now look, you, you still, you're still stuck in the same rut. And he said, it's like having birth pains all over again. And that's how it feels sometimes, isn't it? That's how it feels sometimes when you're trying to help somebody. That's how it feels sometimes when you're trying to be helped. But the reality is, until we understand that we are a spirit being, born again, in line with God, until we get a hold of that, we're never going to find the true answer. But when we do, then we're going to realize that our soul is made up of what? Our mind, our will, and our emotions. Our mind is what we reason with. Isn't that right? That's where we determine something's logical or not, right? Our will is where we make a choice. Am I right about that? You, if, you, if you make a choice, you have willed yourself to make that choice. Are you with me? Here, here, here's the thing before I go any further and we talk, and the body, gosh, the body, you know, the, the body, the, the Bible even talks about the body. You understand that? You are to take care of your body, right? As a temple of the what? The Lord. I mean, it, it, it just, I mean, it's amazing. But before we leave the soul, I just, I'm hung on, I'm stuck on the soul today real quick. How much time have I got? About 10 minutes? <laughs> uh, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. To, re, to, be, to be realistic with you, the soul is one of the greatest, one of the most fantastic creations God's ever made. It's because of the soul that you and I can have feeling. It's because of the soul that you and I can go out and decide to take a hike through the mountains and really be able to enjoy all that God has, has given us. It's because God created us in his image to have a soul that we can, that we can actually uh, make a choice of what we, we, we need to do or don't need to do. It, it actually is why 
groups is so good is because if you didn't have a soul, how are you going to communicate with one another? You going to stand there and do some kind of God sign to them? No, you're going to talk. You're going to talk about things. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to discuss things. You're going to be able to look at the Word together. Maybe you interpret it one way and, and, and I interpret it another, and God brings us to the point where that unity is. You know? That's what we're talking about here. The soul is a magnificent thing, but the problem is it can be the thing that causes static between me and, me and God. It can create static when I feed my soul with what the world wants me to know instead of what God wants me to know. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm just going to say this real quick. I, I, I got all these notes, and I thought I did so good with it. But our mind reasons and it thinks, you know? And so that, that, that's great. That's great. Our will, you know, I've always, when I was young, you got to have a strong will. Well, it's according to what you're willing, right? If, you're, if your will is lined up with the Spirit of God, then it's an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing. But every day you live and breathe, you got to remember we have an enemy. And can I just tell you that enemy hates you? He hates you because you're affiliated with God and he wants to be God. And if you think you walk around and all these people put these, you know, and they think playing with this devil stuff, something funny, let me tell you something. The devil is real and he hates your guts. And he could care less about whether you live or die just as long as you ain't serving God. And can I tell you something else? He hates your children. And God has given you the power. When you received Christ, you received his spirit. And when you received his spirit, if we get into God's word and we spend time on our knees praying to God and we get that word inside of us and then our spirit comes out, we feed our spirit man instead of our flesh. We're feeding our spirit man instead of our flesh. We're feeding our spirit man instead of our flesh. And we continue to do that. The next thing we catch ourselves doing is walking in the will of God. I, I, I have never, I understand why it happens, but sometimes it just really upsets me so much when somebody who is a part of the body of Christ and they all love each other, they sit around and sing kumbaya, one's waving their hand, other's slapping, that's the way to go, sister. We do all these things, and I'm not making fun, we do all these things, and then we go right outside the door, and because she didn't tell me bye, I'm angry. <laughs> Come on. It's the truth. Oh, uh, gosh. Can you believe that? She wore the same dress that I just got. <laughs> Man, don't you sit there like you ain't that way too. I mean, why did that guy lose 40 pounds? Look at me. <laughs> Man, I'm going to stand out now. No, you were already standing out. Here's the point. Here's the point. You are a spirit being. You have a soul. Your mind, will, and emotions. And the only way you're going to keep your mind and your will and your emotions in check is when it's in line with the Spirit of God. When your spirit, when you come to understand, I'm not talking about hoping your spirit's one with God. God's already made your spirit one with Him. All He's saying is, you got to put a little action into it. You, you, look, whatever you feed on, that's what's going to influence your life. And let me tell you something. Every day you live and breathe, you wake up, the first thing usually happens, you turn on the radio or you pick up the phone. Am I right? Oh, come on now. Come on. Am I telling the truth? Or the newspaper? What are we doing? We're feel it's all right to, it's all right to know about this knowledge. But when you're taking in more of that, then you are feeding, when you're feeding the flesh more than you're feeding the spirit, then you're going to be influenced by the flesh and you're going to walk in the flesh and you're going to say, oh, why? 
Just like Paul, I want to do this, but I do this. I want to do this, but I do this. And every time a situation comes up, you know, we, we want to ask God why. Look, we live in a world that's fallen, and the world is fallen. The only thing that's been rebirthed is you if you're born again. There's going to be problems over this earth. There's going to be problems here until we go to be with God. But let me tell you this. These problems that we have down here, Jesus said that I've come that you don't have fear. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's not that we don't have problems. It's just that when our spirit man is in the lead, our, our mind, our thoughts, our decisions, our choices are what God says is best for us. And when we walk it out, we realize that our body's in better shape for it. We hadn't allowed worry and stress and and concern and all those things to weigh us down to the point that we, we, we got a lot to help people with, but we can't get it done because we've let the enemy beat us down in some area of our life. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Boys, I, I don't tell you what. I, I, this has been on my mind so much because I'm going to tell you, if there's ever been a day, and I know there's been bad times, but if there's ever been a day when we need to understand that our spirit man needs to be in the lead. And there's only one way to do that, and that's to, to, to get into the Word of God. So I'm going to finish with this right here. I'm finishing, Joy. Y'all clout back there. I'm about done. <laughs> I'll pick on Joy, but I, I, I'm just going to tell you. here. I'm going to tell you four things that I think we, we, we got to know, and then I'm going to finish. We're all right so far, right? All right. We need to know who we are. I taught a class one time in this church for about four years just on who we are in Christ. And you know what? It did me more good than it did anybody else because when I kept it in front of me, who I am in Christ, what he has done through his spirit, the same things that we've been talking about, it, it, it caused me to have the mind of Christ instead of the mind of a Newberry. And if you know some Newberries, that mind's going to go places because <laughs> I'm one of them. And there's people in here that knew me years ago. And let me tell you something. I needed a renewing of the Spirit. I need a rebirth of the Spirit. And I'm thankful to God that I have that. But we need to know who we are in Christ. The Bible tells us in Peter, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, it says, Stay alert. I'm going to read this quickly. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. In other words, woe is me, get rid of that. Everybody that lives and breathes faces the same, some kind of issue every day. When I went to Haiti, it made me feel bad about some of the things that bothered me over here. Because let me tell you something, when when you sweep your floors and all you're sweeping is dirt, let me tell you, we all got it pretty good. So you can always find somebody that's dealing with something a little tougher than you are. But my point here is, is that we got to know who we are. Jesus can bring us out of these places if we will just walk according to the Spirit. Did you hear what I said? Now, you ain't going to walk according to the Spirit if you don't believe it, if you don't walk in faith. Second thing I want you to know is we have a real enemy. He ain't this guy with red cape and horns coming out. Let me tell you something. He's uglier than that. He's, he, he's, he's much worse than that. We, we have to know that we have an enemy. And the Bible says he prowls around. What's that mean? He's looking for somebody that's going to let their, their, you know, let their guard down just a little bit. It might be something as simple. I, I remember real quickly, we were fishing here a few years ago. John remembers this. And we'd been fishing, and I just had hip surgery. And Bill, who was a, goes to church with us, is a great friend of mine. And I've been serving God for a long time. And we're in the boat, and all of a sudden we decide to move to another place. He guns it, and I go, wow! I mean, I just eat the, I mean, I'm just right on my hip. And before I realized it, I said something I shouldn't have said. <laughs> to Bill, my friend. And I spent a year and a half apologizing <laughs> because as soon as I hit that floor and I said it, as soon as I got back on my feet, after I simmered just a little bit, 
After I cooled down, I said, I, my spirit man came to me and said, man, you blew it. You need to apologize. Why? Because I'm not the same person I was. I know who I am in Christ. And that's not who I am. But that doesn't mean I'm perfect, neither are you. We're all, nobody, God doesn't expect us to be perfect. He expects us to be walking with him. And he'll do the perfecting, not you and I. So we need to know who the enemy is. You know, the enemy always likes to get the lone wolf. That's, that's why sometimes when I hear people say, well, I don't care about coming to church. I can just sit and get out of church I want. No, you can't. No, you can't. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. Because this next one just says, we need each other. The third one is, we need each other. We need each other. We need each other to do exactly what we talked about back there. Pray together. Talk about situations we're dealing with. How can I handle it? So that we can pray for one another. And maybe you've been through the same kind of thing and God gives you a revelation of how to share that with them. Or maybe you just, you just a young Christian and you're wanting to learn and, and, and the enemy's going to come after you, right? He's looking for you to get out there by yourself. He's, he, he, you know, he's going to, the lone wolf is always going to look for the, uh, the enemy's always going to look for that one sheep that strays from the, from the crowd. And that's why we need to come together. And that's why we don't need to worry about who's got the most theology because it doesn't really matter. If you know one good thing about God, you need to share it with somebody. And let me tell you something. If you've got that, you've got as much as anybody that's got a theology degree. If you can just understand that God is love, you've come a long way. If you can just do that. Every person in the... I'm going to say this and I'm closing. I got one more thing then closing. God called us together as a church for a reason, to be the body of Christ. Yeah. You remember the scripture I read a while ago about where are the body of Christ fit together, the members fit together? Let me tell you something. Everybody's not a teacher, but do you know that if you do a Bible study, you're teaching? Do you know if you sit down and you talk to somebody, I mean speaking, or if you sit down and you're just witnessing one-on-one -on -one with someone, you're speaking? Do you realize that? Or if someone asks you a question, you just reply what God gives for them, you're speaking. Isn't that right? When you're addressing your children and telling them what's right and what's wrong, you're speaking. And then there's that other gift, serving. Just think about it this way. I bet nobody in here except the one that cleans them knows who cleans the toilets in there. But if you went in there and them toilets were awful, that old soul tried to jump in there. I ain't going to go to no church. They don't even know how to clean the toilet. <laughs> My son, I taught him how to take, flip that lid up, flip it down. Hey, listen. The reason that Pastor Jody can get up here and speak and do what God has called him to do is because there's numerous people that you don't even know about doing things around here that makes it happen. You don't know right now. One day, one day, one day, you, go, you, you, you don't even know it's happening now. You know that they, your children have people teaching them the Bible over there, but you won't know exactly how tight that is. But one day, you're going to hear your child say something about, I remember when so-and-so told me this, and this was true. And yet, you probably don't even know their name. When you, you, you realize people that get up here and do praise and worship, I count it an honor to be a part of that. But a lot of people don't realize that they spend hours, not because they have to, but because they want to worship the Lord. They want to worship the Lord, and they want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord. The only reason that the church can do what it is supposed to do is because of every one of us. And what the enemy would like to do is anything that would create any kind of dissension or any kind of barrier. Because when that happens, when your opinion becomes greater than God's opinion, then we get in division. Right? I'm finished. Jody, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm there, Joey. I'm there. I'm there. Last thing, last thing, we need to stand our ground. This is what Matt was talking about the other day. We need, he was talking to us the other night at practice, and he was sharing, he, he was talking about endurance. Endurance and 
and, and being vigilant about things. Let me tell you something. In, the endurance that we need to build is the endurance that's built through the Spirit of God. You can practice saying the right things all you want to, but if your heart ain't behind it, if the Spirit ain't, man ain't behind it, all you do is practice in a bunch of words. But when you're, you tell your heart and it lines up with God and God says, I know, I know they're a little rough around the edges, but love them anyway. I know that they got foul mouth, but you know what? Just, just show them you don't have to use those words, but love them. Love. I mean, there's times that we're called to do tough things, but listen to me. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a soulish thing. It's a spiritual thing. We got to bring our soul, our mind, will, and emotions in line with the things that God said. If God says, if, God, if, if I'm believing God for something, all I have to do is have faith and make sure it talks about it in the Word. And let me tell you this in closing. You can't stand your ground trying to live off somebody else's relationship. You've got to have a personal relationship with the living God. And you've got to spend time and get to know him. I've been 39 years with my wife, and can I tell you, I'm still finding things out about her. <laughs> when we both retired, I found out a lot of things about her. <laughs> and I asked myself, how could I have been with her all these years and not seen that? But you know what? It's, that's true. Because we were always busy doing other things. I was coaching. She, and, and then I realized that's the way it is with God. We walk in him with, boy, we, we married to him. And sometimes we don't even know his personality in every situation. God wants you to know him inside and out. And he wants your spirit man to be aligned with him. And he will bring your soul in check, which will also Profit your body. Did you get that today? Yeah. I hope you got something from it. You, I'm, I'm, I'm going to close. I'm, if you're here today and you don't know Christ, if you're here today and you don't know Christ, I want to ask praise team to come on up. We want to give you that opportunity. See, it seems very simple. Jesus said that, I mean, the Bible teaches us that if we believe in Jesus Christ and realize that we're a sinner and we need a Savior, and we we, we believe that he is the son of the living God. The Bible says that if I ask him into my heart, at that moment, you do it by faith and you believe it in your heart. What's the Bible says? It says, you shall be saved, which means you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, which means your spirit, which once was dead, is now alive. And that is the beginning but then it's important to be in church with believers, getting yourself surrounded in the Word, all the things that God wants to do to conform our minds to the things of Christ. I want you to all, the whole church is going to pray with us. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you that he died on a cross for me. So today I repent of all my sins and by faith I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward it will be as if I've never sinned. And I give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap. Now, we don't, we don't give you a hand clap because you're pretty. We give you a hand clap because you just became a new creation in Christ Jesus, and you're fixing to go on the best journey you've ever been on in your entire life. If you made that decision, we have some cards that's in the chairs behind the, in the backs of the chairs. We'd like to get some information, not so that we can bug you or anything, but we'd like to be able to, to maybe give you some materials and and maybe in any way let you know that we're here to help you grow. And the, the, the very things that we talked about today, the things that uh, will help you to become all that Christ wants you to be. Amen? I want you to stand with us. I'm going to ask the prayer partners to come on down. Uh, you may be here and you're born again, but maybe you're dealing with some of the things we talked about today. Maybe 
maybe the soulish realm has really just gotten a hold of you and and you know we've all gotten there before right we've all been there we're not perfect but I want to tell you prayer changes things prayer changes things and we want to help you to renew and energize who you really are in that spirit amen